So this one's a bit of a fun one. This is going to be a, uh, if I was a developer for a day, if old mate Ian called me up and said, hey mate, can you like do what you want to heal us to make things a bit better or a bit more fun, whatever in your opinion. This is what I would do. Now, first off my general focus would be bringing up all healers to the Resto Druid level. I wouldn't be looking at nerfing Resto Druid or preservation. I'd want all the other healers to come up to that level. And when I say that, my focus would be on making sure that all healers have quote unquote complete toolkits. And by that, I mean, I want all healers to have decent tank healing or spot healing, decent stacked healing, decent spread healing, decent cooldowns. I want all healers to have a kick. I want all healers to have an external, that sort of thing. I want all healers to be able to fundamentally do the same things. And then the healer you choose to play determines like how you achieve those goals, what, what the play style is. But I want functionally all healers to roughly be able to do the same things. I think in, you know, current year, I think the idea of, as an example, one or, or like one class or two specializations of healers out of seven not having a kick or one of seven healers not having an external cooldown is just, it doesn't work in modern WoW. With Mythic Plus being a big part of what a lot of people do, I think that healers should be balanced around Mythic Plus just as much as they are around Raid. And I think from, oh, let's say what, Legion onwards, Blizzard kind of tried their hand at giving all different specializations some strengths and some weaknesses. And then the idea was that you would kind of combine different healing specs to form like a healing team in a raid. And you'd have some healers that brought a strength which covered the weakness that other healers had. And that might have worked back then, but I think in, I mean, in Dragonflight, when a lot of people just want to log in and blast keys all day, where if you're the healer in the key, if you have a specific weakness, there's no other healer to try and shore up that pain point or problem. So I think all healers need to be like fundamentally capable of doing the same things. And then they just go about doing them in different ways based on play style. Uh, to start off with, we're going to be talking about Resto Druid quickly. And like I said, uh, I would like to bring all healers up to a Resto Druid kind of level at the moment. So I quickly wanted to talk about what I think makes Resto Druid so good. Specifically in Mythic Plus, that is going to basically be this left side area of the spec tree that covers Verdancy and the Life Bloom nodes. Now for people who aren't maybe like really up to date, on how Resto Druid plays right now. The way Resto Druid has historically always worked is that they have been the kind of token healing over time healer. They apply hot effects and then those hot effects do the majority of their healing. The way Resto Druid has worked since Legion probably, in some ways has felt a bit like hots served the purpose of buffing mastery and then Resto Druid throughput in a Mythic Plus environment came solely from regrowth. One of the things I praised about Resto Druids in beta was that the reliance on regrowth to affect throughput was lessened. You could pick other talent builds and use other abilities to get a lot of healing out without having to stand still and spam regrowth mindlessly to move health bars. And I think that's been a, a huge step forward for Resto Druids in Dragonflight. A big part of this has been these life bloom nodes at the bottom of the spec tree. That is budding leaves that causes your life bloom healing to be increased each time it ticks, along with photosynthesis that most people are probably familiar with, which is while your life bloom is on yourself, your periodic healing heals 20% faster. And while your life bloom is on an ally, your periodic healing effects on them have a chance to cause that life bloom to bloom. You throw in undergrowth, which allows you to have two targets with life bloom on them. And life bloom all of a sudden becomes a huge part of Resto Druid's throughput. This, this single node at the bottom, undergrowth, almost effectively doubles life bloom healing for one talent point. So that's, I mean, obviously very, very strong. What really puts Resto Druid over the edge right now is Verdancy. So this is another one point node, which causes your efflorescence to proc a heal on three targets in your efflorescence when your life bloom blooms. The rest of the build is fairly self-explanatory. You basically put life bloom on allies and then you stack a couple of hots on them. And when those hots tick, they have a chance to proc the or bloom the life bloom and that 
Bloom then procs the Efflorescence Heal. This is like, it's crazy strong. If memory serves, the Verdancy Heal, I believe is about 100% spell power healing on three targets. To put this into perspective a little bit, this is not quite, but almost as strong as Wild Growth. Wild Growth has a 10 second cooldown, Verdancy can proc like three or four times in that 10 second window. So in stacked healing situations where your whole party is standing on your efflorescence and you have multiple hots rolling on, all, on both of your life bloom targets, your Verdancy or your efflorescence can proc Verdancy like very often. It's a pretty regular occurrence for me that Verdancy out heals re, uh, wild growth in my overalls for healing keys. And that's with using wild growth very liberally. Now, why Resto Druid is strong is, I mean, it's basically this, what I've just discussed, but the, the kicker here, I guess, or the bonus is that all of this extra throughput that Resto Druids get from these couple of one point nodes don't require Resto Druids to do anything in particular. They don't require hard casting heals. They don't require extra mana expenditure. They don't require more globals. The only thing that's necessary is for your party to stand in your efflorescence. That's it. And then you almost just play the game like normal. You use your life blooms for your healing. And then you basically just get an enormous amount of free AOE healing thrown in on top of what you usually do as a Resto Druid. The weakness Resto Druid has had prior to Shadowlands has been that it was easy to fall behind. If you didn't have all of your hots rolling, if you weren't prepared for incoming damage patterns, then your healing was delayed because it took multiple globals to get your hots rolling and get your healing out. What Shadowlands added for Resto Druids was it gave them Convoke the Spirits. And Convoke is like a, it's a couple, it does a couple of things depending on when you use it. It can be a fantastic healing cooldown when you already have your hots rolling or it can be a fantastic button to press when you don't have your hots rolling, where you would be behind, but then you can press Convoke and basically instantly catch up to any kind of damage pattern that happens to be occurring that you might not have been prepared for. So we're now in a position where Resto Druid really doesn't have much of a weakness. You throw in Adaptive Swarm on top of that and Flourish and all of the normal Resto Druid goodies. And yeah, all of a sudden Resto Druid really doesn't have any weakness. It excels at quite a few things, and it has crazy synergy between most of its talents. The reason I started with Resto Druid is I wanted to give a good outline of what I consider to be a well-designed and thought out and numerically well-balanced, even though it's far superior to all the other healers, uh, healing specialization. This is excellent work on Blizzard's behalf, in my opinion, and I would like to see the other healers brought up to this level. Preservation Evoker is the other healer that, especially for now with it being so new, is a healer that I really wouldn't touch. It feels strong, it's unique, it doesn't really have any glaring issues at the moment. It does great damage, fantastic stacked healing, it has decent mobility, it, it ticks all the boxes in a lot of ways. And like I said, with it being such a new healer and a lot of people still trying to like figure it out, I wouldn't be messing with it too much. The only thing I would look at is figuring out ways to make Preservation Evokers spend mana. At the moment, they don't really do that, especially if they're not playing a TA build. If I was a developer for a day or Mistweaver, what I would change? Well, first of all, I would go back to like 6.3 Mistweaver and I would just copy and paste that. So like the WAD or let's say Actually, let's say Hellfire Citadel Mistweaver back with the set bonus, I think it was called Extend Life, that basically put like a little beacon on all of the targets you cast Renewing Mist on. This is back when Renewing Mist had three charges, Uplift was instant, Mistweaver still had Chi and the original Mana T, and they still had the stances and things. I would go back to that Mistweaver if I could. Now, if that wasn't possible, how I would adjust the current Mistweaver is by significantly adjusting Thunder Focus T. At the moment, Thunder Focus T to me feels a little bit like it is used for mana management with no mana cost vivifies and rising sun kick cooldown resetting if you're fist leading. And that is for the most part, that's pretty much all Thunder Focus T really feels like it is. And with the Feline Stomp extra reset chance nodes, it means that Thunder Focus T turns into like not a great button to press anymore. The way I would rework 
TFT is I would make it do something regarding channeling abilities. So if you think about it, Miss Weaver has an AOE channeled ability in Essence Font, a single target channeled ability in Soothing Mist, and a damaging channeling ability in Crackling Jade Lightning, this poor little spell here that's been forgotten for like five years. And what I would do is I would effectively make it so you can press your Thunder Focus T to either get a completely instant fully channeled ability and I would I would balance the channeled abilities accordingly so that if you used your Thunder Focus T on an instant Crackling Jade Lightning it did serious damage or if you used it on an instant Essence Bond it also did like serious burst healing AoE healing or Again, if you used it on Soothing Mist, it did some serious single target emergency healing. I would also just straight up buff the hell out of Crackling Jade Lightning. I think it's a little bit criminal at the moment that Mistweavers have kind of a major melee damage ability in Rising Sunkick, which is an integral, fantastic part of their toolkit and then a range damaging ability that just does absolutely nothing. I would really like to see Crackling Jade Lightning be properly buffed or worked into the spec in some way so that it's not useless. I would also buff Ancient Teachings back to probably 250%, maybe even 300%. And I would turn the Feyline Stomp branch into a cooldown rather than a rotational ability. So in those two changes, what I would like to go back to is ancient teachings feeling like proper healing rather than just you know the talent that you have to take to enable your feline stomp branch and the feline stomp branch being a rotational ability means that if you take this branch it really overtakes the rest of the spec so i would change it into even if it kept almost like the same mechanical functionality but it was a cooldown rather than something you just have up all the time and maybe make it a little bit stronger as a cooldown i would also make ancient teachings be proper smart healing so it always heals the most injured ally that isn't a pet or guardian or anything within 30 yards so that this can be relied on as triage healing i would also change vivacious vivification to also affect enveloping mist maybe call it viv vivacious envelopment or something or enveloping vivification i don't know whatever and the idea would be that every 10 seconds you have either an instant cast vivify or an instant cast enveloping mist it seems a little strange to me that so much of the mist weaver weaver is in the name of the mist weaver toolkit is meant to be using both of your kind of casted abilities you're like the bread and butter for Miss Weaver has always been enveloping mist and vivify and even now there's still two buttons that you want to use quite often and you get rewarded or you're supposed to be rewarded for alternating them and using them for different situations and then on your class tree you have a talent that makes your vivify significantly better but not anything that affects enveloping mist I would also change Manatee to just go back to the old Manatee. For those who don't know how it worked, it was it did originally function with Chi. So when you spent a certain amount of Chi, you gained a stack or a charge of Manatee. When you gained a stack, it could crit. And if it crit, you would gain twice as many charges. And you could build them up to 20 charges and then you could channel to use your Manatee, which used your charges and returned you mana for each charge used. So I would go back to something like that. I don't really mind how the Manatee charges would be gained. I don't even care if they were just gained passively or if you would gain them through your normal gameplay. But the the idea or the way Mistweaver used to work was that it was kind of like a build and then burn healer. So you could build up your mana and your manatee stacks and then you could burn through all of it in like a 30 or 40 second window and then you could build it back up again to burn it later on and i really like that sort of play style and i think that's part of what's lacking from the current mistweaver toolkit as far as resto shamans go i would start off by getting rid of primordial wave i didn't really like this ability in shadowlands i don't like it now uh, i think it's almost like a crime that chain harvest wasn't put in this spot or even vesper totem and instead we got primordial wave i just personally i'm not a fan of it i would just straight up replace primordial wave with chain harvest i would keep the same functionality chain harvest had with these uh further talents that it branches down into which would be 
every target hit by Chain Harvest gets a Riptide applied to them. And I'd probably add some functionality that allowed you to spam Chain Heal to reduce the cooldown on Chain Harvest. I would also buff Chain Heal, not by a huge amount. I would either buff Flow of Tides up to something like 50%. Oh God, for that matter, maybe even like 100. Like if you're gonna eat a Riptide, it has to come with a, like a heavy buff to make that worthwhile. I think I would change Ancestral Reach to not give an extra bounce, but rather increase the bounce distance. Similar to the PvP talent, Tidebringer. So the jump distance is increased by 100%. I'd, I'd do something like that here instead. The other option would be instead of doing the bounce distance or the jump distance in this choice node, I would instead make Deluge a one-pointer keep it at 20% and then make that into a choice node so that you could pick between either having more chain healing throughput on stack targets in your healing reign or you could choose to instead of have that you could have a better spread chain healing through longer jump distances on your chain heal. I would also add something on the class tree that was a totem node that read something along the lines of drops your three most recently used unique totems in one global cooldown. At the moment, dropping healing stream totems, poison cleansing totem if you're using it, or stone skin or tranquil air, along with all the other whatever totems you're using, it's too many globals at the moment. And I would like to see shamans go back to more of a totem focused spec or class even. Uh, in Dragonflight, shamans feel like Riptide bots. They were the exact same kind of thing in Shadowlands. Riptide was the main part of playing Resto Shaman, and I would like to see totems play more of a major role in the spec. And I would do that by making the totems that we have access to easier to use. If I didn't want to do it as a your three most recent totems, I would add some kind of functionality so that I could drag totems onto the totem bar, like a like a glass bar, and then I could press a button to drop all of those totems all the, like with one global cooldown. So I could walk up to every pack and drop Mana Spring, drop a Healing Stream Totem or a Tranquil Air or something like that. I would change this Deeply Rooted Elements, the Ascendance proc when you cast Riptide, the 7% chance. I would change that into a 7% chance to reduce the cooldown of Ascendance by 6 seconds rather than proc Ascendance. I think having purely RNG throughput cooldowns for healers is fairly bad. The only time it feels good is for Holy Paladins and that's because it's Wings can be up so often. And uh, Paladins can also get pretty decent uh, damage effectiveness out of their wings. Whereas Shamans really gain nothing but healing. And you can, I mean, it's a capstone talent that will more often than not probably proc when you don't need healing. I would also look at bringing back the kind of set bonus from Shadowlands for Resto Shamans, which was that when you drop a totem, you get an instant cast free chain heal. I would look at that if I felt like the kind of rotational normal throughput of Resto Shaman was still a little bit lacking. The sustained healing, the AOE healing, which I think it is lacking at the moment, but after these changes, I wouldn't be so sure. So I would keep that one in my back pocket. The major change I would make for Resto Shaman is I would turn Earth Shield into a passive damage reduction. So I would make Earth Shield a passive 8% damage reduction permanently. So whichever targets get Earth Shield have 8% damage reduction. Maybe even 10, but probably 8. I've said that I feel like all healers should have a similar, like the same kind of functionality in their toolkit. All healers should have an external cooldown, for example. I don't necessarily think that means all externals need to be the same and I would be happy to experiment with giving one of the healers a permanent damage reduction rather than a cooldown damage reduction. I know Dis Priests and Holy Paladins already have this but one that's significantly stronger on one or two targets in this case is something that I think could be quite good. This next spec is pretty hard for me. I, I know what I would add to the class for priests and that is I would give them shadows silence like a 45 second cooldown silence so quite a long cooldown kick a little bit of extra functionality in that it's a silence and not just a kick but I, th I think that all healers need a kick or none of them get one I think five of the seven healers having a kick all it really does is make the two that don't have a kick feel bad so I would I would incorporate that into disc and holy and I would add mobility. So that would either be in the form of 
getting the Leap of Faith reversal talent in. I know Blizzard said that effectively priests can't have it because everybody else has mobility or they can't have it because they would use it because it would be really good to have. Makes no sense to me why that's a good reason to not give the wheelchair healer some increased mobility. And if I didn't do that, I would add Door of Shadows to the priest class tree. I would, I would do one or the other. I don't even care if it was a choice node. Priests need something. They need... Mobility isn't just about being able to heal on the move. It's being able to cross distances quickly. And for a lot of situations, just having Feather or Body and Soul just isn't enough. So those are the kind of easy changes for Priests. Give them a little bit of extra mobility and give them a kick. Nothing too crazy. As far as Holy Throughput or Toolkit goes, I don't really know what I would change here. I feel like Holy Priest design space has kind of been backed into a corner through talents like Lightweaver, Trail of Light, and the kind of obvious way that Holy Priest works is that they, they press their filler or rotational heals to reduce the cooldown on their holy words. I would like to make holy priests more than just flash heal and heal spam bots. I just don't know how to do it. So much of the holy priest toolkit and so many of their talents are really just making heal better, making flash heal better. Regardless of what talents you take or how you play, you always do the same thing, which is just spam those two buttons over and over again. Like I said, I, I don't know what I would do to change that, but I would love to be able to get away from that. I would love to, for Holy Priest to have a little bit more nuance, a little bit more depth. I just don't know how to do it, unfortunately. Prior to Dragonflight, I would have said that uh, both Priest specs need some better defensive options, but I actually think Priest defensives are quite decent. It seems a little bit like um, the way I was talking about how I wanted Resto Shamans to have a passive DR on Earth Shield that's just always active rather than a cooldown based defensive, I feel like that's a similar route or idea that Blizzard have taken for Holy or like Priest defensives in general, and that is that Protective Light is a 10% DR that can always be up and Fade can be used as a further 10% DR that can be up almost like every time you need it. So. Priest might not have the strongest cooldown defensives, but they are definitely the healer that can have a 20% DR up like all the time, more than any other healer. For every real mechanic, when things get scary, you always have some small defensive to stack to press and a couple of those things stack together and all of a sudden Priest feels quite tanky. I, I found that to be really interesting and, and fun way to build defense on a healer. And I wouldn't be touching that. I, I would leave that basically as is. As far as discipline goes, this is another spec where I wouldn't really change much. And that is mainly because the changes coming in 10.0.5, in my opinion, are all going to be quite good. And it's going to do a lot for the spec or do a lot to improve the spec in ways that I wanted to have happen anyway. Things like increasing the effectiveness of painful punishment so that taking expiation doesn't feel as punishing. Reducing the mana cost on Mind Blast so that playing the Dark Disc build doesn't just instantly run you oom. Baking more spells into Harsh Discipline so that you don't feel like you're only spamming Smite all the time. Bringing Power Word Solace back as an active ability that you can get a lot of value out of if you play around well. These are all changes that I think are excellent for Disc. So there, there really isn't much I would change here other than probably buff inescapable torment i feel like this should do damage and i would probably look at making twilight equilibrium work with heals as well as damaging abilities uh, actually just thinking about it now the only thing i would mess with with disc in like a, a larger sense would be i would probably make a choice node between barrier and spirit shell i would also probably buff the damage of Mindbender and Shadow Fiend, so that pressing these buttons felt like a proper throughput cooldown. I could even throw that into the choice node instead of Spirit Shell. All I'm really looking for here is a way to give Discipline a throughput cooldown that isn't dependent on your group stacking in just the right spot at the right time. I think Holy Paladin right now is the third best healer in Mythic Plus. I think it's the closest to Resto Druid and Preservation, and as such, I don't have that many things I would change. I'm, I'm not looking to make Holy Paladins like significantly stronger than they already are. I think they got a lot of that sort of thing coming into Dragonflight, 
getting one minute sack, being able to take double beacon uh, and glimmer and divine toll and 40 yard lord range, stuff like that. I think those have all been excellent additions to Holy Paladin's toolkit. But the couple of things I would change is that I would get rid of Dusk and Dawn. I think this is a pretty terrible mechanic for healers to maximize or play around. I know the durations have been buffed now to 20 seconds, but I still think that Holy Power as a resource and the decision making that goes into building and spending that should be dependent on the incoming damage patterns and the kind of throughput you want to do. Not a simple matter of just maintaining two buffs all the time. I think that's, like I said, I think that's pretty poor design for healers. And I would do something to buff Holy Paladin mobility. Probably bring back Long Arm of the Law. Uh, it was in the very early beta builds for Paladin, but it got scrapped. I would look at bringing that back. I don't think Paladins need to be zooming all over the map. But I do think that Steed isn't quite enough. Even when you talent into it in all the possible ways you can, it still doesn't feel like enough. I would also buff the hell out of Holy Shock used offensively. Holy Shock is such an integral part of Holy Paladin's toolkit, and it's so good for healing that using it offensively should be rewarded. If you're using it for damage, it should do damage. Uh, at the moment, it's it's in a pretty sad state. It just doesn't really too much damage wise. So I would I would significantly buff that. But that's pretty much it. I think the changes coming into Avenging Crusader in 10.0.5 are enormous. Um, I think people maybe haven't quite cottoned on to just how strong this is going to be. Getting Avenging Crusader on a 45 second cooldown, even though it's going to cost five Holy Power, I don't care. It's going to be crazy good throughput. I'm really excited to play this. This is something that I didn't think of myself, like buffing melee wings, but it's something that now that I've I've read about it and thought about it, I'm, I'm really keen. I think this is a fantastic direction to take or an option to have for Holy Paladins, and I'm excited to play it in the next, hopefully, couple of weeks. Now, as a final like caveat to all of my ramblings today, obviously, some of the things I've talked about, if all of those changes happen to a healer that healer would probably be way too strong like miss weaver if all of those changes got implemented miss weaver would be insane so it wouldn't necessarily have to be all of these things i would obviously like healers to be more balanced but i would also be focusing on balancing their toolkits and like mechanically how they play and what they have access to and then i would look at balancing the numbers more heavily to bring everything in line but uh tell me your thoughts i guess or what you'd like to see changed or if you think my ideas are terrible uh, and thanks for watching and algorithm stuff